In this question, we are given the coordinates of point A, 1, minus 2, 4. I'm going to rewrite it into the column vector first. OA, 1, minus 2, 4. We are also given the Cartesian equation of pi 1. 2x minus y plus 2z equal to 5. I'm going to rewrite it into the scalar dot product form. We have uh, r dot 2 minus 1, 2 equal to 5. And part A of this question wants us to find the exact shortest distance between point A and the plane pi 1. I'll be drawing a diagram to illustrate this scenario here. We have a pi 1 here. We have a point A. And if we want to find the shortest distance, it will just be uh, point A to the perpendicular of this plane. Maybe we can call this D. And in order to find this, we have a few methods, but I'm going to go for the length of projection method, which say that, let's say, if we have a vector A, we have a vector B, and this will be a perpendicular. If we want to find the so-called length of projection here, the formula will just be given to be uh, A dot B over modulus of B, or we can use A dot B cap. So in this case, I'm going to come up with a random point that is on the plane pi 1. Maybe we can call it a point B. So by a bit of observation, as long as we select a point when we sub inside, this expression, when we draw it up, equal to 5, means that will be a point on the plane pi 1. I think uh, one of the points that I can see will be 0, minus 5, 0. So you can see, if we were to sub 0, minus 5, 0 inside, when we draw it up, sure enough, I will get equal to 5. So therefore, this point will be lying on the plane. All right, we can connect our vector A and vector B to form this diagonal. And now with the triangle display here, we can actually make use of this formula now. So therefore, my shortest distance D will just be equal to BA dot with the normal of this plane, which is 2 minus 1, 2 over square root 2 square plus 1 square plus 2 square. What I'm effectively doing, I'm trying to do a length of projection of AB or BA onto the normal vector, which will give us the required shortest distance from point A to plane pi 1. And in this case, we are going to just use BA. So BA will just be OA minus OB, which is just this minus this. I will get 1, 3, 4 dot with 2 minus 1, 2 over this, I will be able to evaluate uh, which is 2 square plus 1 square plus 2 square which give me a 9 square root of 9 is just 3. And this, if I were to dot this up, I will end up with a 7 and this is over 3. So this will be the answer for my part A. Right now, let's take a look at part B of this question. Part B says now we are also given another plane pi 2. Let me just rewrite it into the scalar dot product form, which is r dot 1, 3, minus a equal to 3. And for part B of this question, we are required to find the vector equation of the line or intersection between pi 1 and pi 2. Right, usually uh, for line intersection between two planes, we are able to make use of our calculator, but not for this situation because we can see hey, there's an unknown here. So we are not able to uh, put this value into the GC and ask the GC to find out the line of intersection for us. So uh, what shall we be doing instead? Okay, let me just draw out a diagram to illustrate the scenario first. So imagine this is my pi 1. We have a pi 2 here. And the line of the section we are finding actually is this line here. So this is the line we need to find. Right, for a line, we need two components. One will be the direction, the other one will be a point that lies on this line. Right, let's look at how are we going to find the direction first. We can imagine that 
there will be a normal of pi 1, maybe we can call it uh, n1, and we have a normal of pi 2, we call it uh, n2. All right now we need to use a bit of imagination. So let's say if we were to use n1 cross with n2, we will get a vector that is perpendicular to both. If I use this cross with this, in fact, I will get a vector that is pointing in this direction, which happens to be parallel to the line on intersection. This cross this, I will get a vector that is parallel to the line on intersection. So this is what we are going to do. We are going to use n1 cross with n2. So n1 we have is equal to 2 minus 1, 2 cross with n2, which is 1, 3 minus 8. Right? We can do a quick evaluation of this. I will be able to get uh, a minus 6, 2a plus 2, and 7. All right, so now we are going to find a way to figure out a point that lies on this line. And what we are going to do, right, we are going to look at the Cartesian version of pi 1 and pi 2 first. So for pi 1, the Cartesian version is a 2x minus y plus 2z equal to 5. And for pi 2, it will just be equal to x plus 3y minus az equal to 3. So what we are going to do, right, we are going to set z to be equal to 0. For both equations. So what actually I'm trying to do, right, if we were to look at uh, this x, y, z, we have this plane, x, y plane, we have a x, z plane, we have a y, z plane here. So if we have a line that is going across all this plane, by setting z to be zero, right, it's actually is trying to find a particular point that is on the x, y plane, which is here. Right, so what we are doing to do is setting z to be equal to here. I will be having two equations, which is a 2x minus y equal to 5 and a x plus 3y equal to 3. So this component here is gone because I'm setting z to be 0. We can call this equation 1, equation 2. In fact, if you want, you can actually also set y to be 0 and also set x to be 0. So in this case, I'll just set z to be 0. And from here, using our GC, we should be able to solve equation 1 and 2. Solving 1 and 2, I should be able to get x to be equal to 18 over 7 and my y to be equal to 1 over 7. So with this information, we can write down the line on the section already, which is equal to a point that is on the line which is 18 over 7 1 over 7 0 plus lambda and the direction will just be this which is a minus 6 2a plus 2 7 where lambda is an element of all real values right so this will be my part b of the question now let's continue with part C of this question. I have replicated the line of the section between pi 1 and pi 2 here. We'll be using this result later on. Part C says that we are given another pi 3, which is in bx minus 2y plus 4z equal to 3. I'm going to rewrite it into the scalar dot product form first. I will have a b minus 2, 4 equal to 3. And part C say we are supposed to show A minus 6, B minus 4 equal to 0 if L is parallel to pi. Let me just draw a quick diagram to help us visualize what is happening. We have pi 3 and we have a line L which is this, which is parallel to this pi 3. We can call the normal of my pi 3 to be N3. So from this diagram, since L is parallel to the plane, we can see that the normal of pi 3, in fact, is perpendicular to the direction. So we will know that if we were to use the direction of my L, which is A minus 6, 2A plus 2, 7, 
dot with b minus 2 4 should give me equal to 0. So let's evaluate this. We have uh, a b minus 6b minus 4a minus 4 plus 28 equal to 0. Okay, I'm going to shift this term over to the left hand side here. I have uh, a b minus 4a and this will be minus 6b. This will add up to be 24 equal to 0. I'm going to factorize out this a. I will left with a b minus 4 here and I'm going to factorize uh, minus 6 here. I will left with uh, b minus 4 equal to 0. And doing a bit of factorization, I will get uh, a minus 6, b minus 4 equal to 0. This is what we require to show. And as for part D, it says they state the conditions that A and B must follow for the three planes to form a triangular prism where all the planes are non-parallel and they do not have any point in common. Justify your answer. Alright, so what is a triangular prism? Right, so I'm attempt to draw the third plane on the previous diagram, which is uh, pi 1 and pi 2, and they intersect in the line L. So I'm going to overlap a pi 3 on this same diagram. Say it will look something like this. So if I were to overlap this plane on this pi 1, pi 2, can you see that actually we'll be forming a triangular prism? Right? So looking in this direction, we can see this is a triangle. And this triangle actually is extended inwards. So this is the triangular prism we are looking at. Right, so with this um, diagram, they are saying what are the conditions necessary for a triangular prism to be formed between pi 1, pi 2, pi 3. Right, by a bit of observation, right, in fact, I can see that my pi 3 will still be parallel to the line of the section. Right, this plane is still parallel to this. That is why the condition for a triangular prism, right, one of the conditions must be this. Right, so part C, we are going to use this result, but uh, there's one more condition that we need to satisfy. That is right, I cannot have this plane pi tree to be cutting this line on the section. In other words, I cannot have this line on the section to be inside this plane. Because if this line is inside this plane, right, then they will no longer have any triangular prism. Right, so I will know that uh, to ensure that this line does not contain this plane, I'm going to look at this point. As long as this point right doesn't satisfy my pi tree, right? This point doesn't satisfy my pi tree, then this plane will not be uh, containing the line L already. So I'm going to do something like this. So I'm going to take this point 18 over 7, 1 over 7, 0. If I were to sub inside this pi tree, I'll get b minus 2, 4, and it mustn't be equal to 3. So this is the second condition that I need. I'm going to evaluate this, which is 18 over 7, b minus 2 over 7, not equal to 3. And simplifying this, right, I will be able to get b cannot be equal to 7, 7, 21, 23 over 18. Right, so this will be the condition needed. Right, so these two conditions. But we are going to put these two together. First of all, if we look at this condition here, right, uh, there are actually uh, two cases here. The first case is right when a is equal to 6. Right, when a equal to 6, it will give me equal to 0. I will see that uh, b, in fact, can take on every single value. Right? When a is 6, b can be any single value. But as long as b is not equal to this, which is the second condition here, then uh, it, will, it will satisfy already. This is one of the criteria. So a is equal to 6, and b can be everything except for 23 over 18. So this will be my first answer. But we can also see another case can be a can be everything, but b can be equal to 4. Right, so we can see as long as b equal to 4, right, this will end up to be 0. A can be anything. So when you multiply together, it will just be equal to 0. 
All right, so this will be the answers I required for my part D of this question.